Hey everybody, uh, I'm trying to shoot a video here about lighting in the aquarium and it is just giving me a heck of a time because I keep getting ahead of myself and behind myself and I'm talking in circles. Um, whenever I get to talking about lighting and things like uh, what we want to talk about tonight which is color rendering and color temperature, uh, I just it, it's an overwhelming topic for me because there's just so many different aspects of this. It's a very complicated subject. Light is some really strange stuff and I start going around in circles and I feel like I get more convoluted than actually explanatory and so I stop and start over. So we're going to try to talk about color rendering again and we're going to try to talk about how your tank actually appears to you visually. We're not going to talk so much about um, plants and lighting and the kind of lights plants need although I probably will touch on it. Um, but I, I just I never know where to start. I guess I should start with explaining the idea that there there is no such thing as a colored object. Objects themselves do not have color. We know this because if you put one in the dark, you can't see any color on it. You don't see color until you shine light on it. Uh, therefore, the color is a property of the light. It is not a property of the object itself. Um, the way that works is you're ha you have a, a rock or you have those plants that are made out of some sort of material. It reflects some light, it disperses other light, it absorbs some light, but ultimately the light that is reflected off of it is what we see. It's what comes into our eyeballs. Those particular wavelengths of light are interpreted by our brain as being green or red or blue or whatever, and therefore we see these colors. Um, it's not that the leaf itself is green, it's just that it's green light that's being reflected off of it. And technically there's no such thing really even as green light. It is simply a certain wavelength of light that our brains perceive as green. So for all intents and purposes I will simply call it green light or red light or whatever. But that really does simply refer to a certain spectrum, a certain wavelength of light is what gives us a certain color. That is important to know though. Um, so when we get into color rendering, uh, color rendering is a light's ability to accurately show you what we can call the color of whatever object you're looking at. If you shine different light on that same plant, that plant will appear very differently. Um, we could do something drastic, like if we shined a red light on it, the plant would suddenly appear black. And the reason is it doesn't reflect red light. So we shine red light on it, no red light's going to bounce off of it, no red light is going to hit our eyeballs, and therefore we're not going to see that plant. It's going to appear black. You have to have the wavelengths of light shining on it that will then reflect off in order for us to see it. So if you have light that has a lot of blues in it but doesn't have a lot of reds in it, it's really going to change the appearance of whatever you're looking at. If you've got light that's, you know, and just think about it in simple terms of how different does a tank look when you have a soft white light on it versus a bright white light on it, or a cool white rather. Um, those, those terms are sort of interchangeable, and we'll get into the color temperature thing in a minute, I hope. Um, you know, just, just how different does the tank look when you put the soft white on it versus the cool white? What you're seeing is different color rendering you put that soft white on there and you're shining a lot of reds and oranges on the tank and so that's you're going to see a lot of the reds and oranges it's going to soften all the other colors you're not going to notice them because you're not shining that spectrum of light on them so if you've got blue fish like the little lone neon I've got in there under soft white lights neons don't look very good you're not shining enough blue light on them to have that bright blue light reflected back off of them so you don't see a very blue fish. You have to have that light shining on them in the first place. So when we get into color temperature, that is actually based on the same principle as if you heat metal up and the metal goes through different colors as it gets to be different temperatures and eventually it gets so hot that it incandesces white. Well, if you've got an arbitrary imaginary substance and you start heating it up and we're not using Fahrenheit or Celsius degrees we're using degrees Kelvin that's where the K comes from and you get up to say 2700 degrees Kelvin this arbitrary imaginary object will be glowing at that yellow soft sort of you know what we think of as that soft white light 
as this object gets hotter and hotter, it gets whiter and whiter until we eventually get up into the 6500, 8000, 10000K, and then we start getting into where we're actually beyond the pure white and we get into like the blue and the actinic, uh, and then that's, you know, we're getting into something a little different at that point. So we're going to stop around the 10000K part. Um, so between 2700K and 10000K is typically what we're going to be looking at when we look at a light source. Now, it's important to note that that color temperature comes from an incandescent radiator. An incandescent radiator is just what I described. It's something that's heated up and it glows brighter and brighter, we'll say, or it gets whiter and whiter as it gets hotter and hotter. So by the time we're all the way up to 10,000 K, it's got an even distribution of all the spectrums up to that point. So that gives you 100% true color rendering. You can't really get 100% or a, a, color rating in, a color rendering index, a CRI, of 100 on a light source that is not an incandescent radiator. When you get into fluorescence, and LEDs, you're talking about a kind of light that produces light differently. It's not an incandescent radiator. It doesn't warm up through the whole spectrum. You just start by producing light on a certain wavelength. You're just making these phosphors and these gases glow by exciting the molecules and they produce light. They, they produce photons. So we've got, say, a 10,000 K tube like we're looking at here I have a 10,000 K tube and I have a tube that is called color max but that 10,000 K tube is not the same 10,000 K that you would get if you had a 10,000 K incandescent bulb or if you had an HID high intensity discharge uh, metal halide I believe would give you a nice pure 10,000 K or 6500 K whatever it's rated at I think you would get an accurate color rendering because you would have this nice even distribution of light so if you've ever wondered why some tubes don't you know they say 6500 K but you put them on your tank and they look funny or they don't look the same as the last tubes you had on there it depends on how it's manufactured it depends on what phosphors are put in it it depends on what gases they use um, you can, you can, there's a lot of different ways you can get to the end result of being that visual appearance of 6500K. When you talk about anything that is not an incandescent radiator, um, you have what is known as a correlated color temperature. It's not a true color temperature, it's a correlated color temperature based on the simple visual appearance of it. So that 10,000K tube that we're looking at looks like it's 10,000 K, but it does not necessarily mean it's giving you an even distribution of all spectrums of light up to 10,000 K the way an incandescent radiator would. Did you follow all that? So, why is that important? What difference does that make? Well, if we're talking about the color of an object, not really being the color of the object, but being the color that is the light reflecting off of it, well, you're not going to see something green if you don't shine green light on it. You know, so if you've got, I guess the best example would be to use if somebody wanted to have that nice soft light in their tank and they put uh, 2700K tubes on their tank. That might look lovely to you. It's nice and relaxing. It really does actually trigger certain parts of our brain. Um, you know, we've got a long history of sitting around campfires and watching the sunset and those soft reds and those oranges, they do things, they're relaxing, it's, it's nice to look at a tank like that. However, if you've got a lot of bright blue fish in a tank like that and you're putting this soft orangey light on it, you, your fish aren't going to look very good. You're not going to see those blues popping out of the fish because you're not shining blue light on the fish in order for it to bounce off of the fish. Uh, the other thing with the 2700K, your plants wouldn't last very long because they need the higher energy blue lights that you get from the higher color temperatures, etc. So really, you, you really do want to have a higher color temperature because it does give you better color rendering, but it gives you better plants as well. If you don't have plants, don't worry about it. If you like the 2700K, you can have it. You're probably going to have a little bit of issues with algae and maybe some cyanobacteria um, because they like those softer lights too. But again, I'm not really going to get into the whole plant thing. <clears throat> As far as visual appeal, 
let's say you do have fish like I've got in here. I've got fish that have a lot of earth tones and reds in them. This is a very earthy tank. I've got it designed to be a very red, earth tone, browns, rich colors, uh, the wood colors. I like it. And you get a lot of that, those colors, those earth tones, are all softer colors. They're all down more on the red end of the spectrum. So if I'm shining a lot of really bright light on there, a lot of bright white light on there, and I'm popping all the blues and everything out of the neon that are in there, I'm also going to get all my reds, I'm also going to get all my browns and all those colors. But if I really wanted to tweak it and I really wanted to make that orange and yellow and everything in there pop, I could add a 2700K tube as well. It's not going to hurt it to have the 2700K and the 10,000K, but by putting the additional 2700K on there, I'll be adding a lot of those softer colors that maybe that 10,000K tube wouldn't. Remember, if you've got an incandescent radiator, you're going to have all those reds and blues are going to be produced. It's going to be a nice, even paint job across the spectrum. If you're using tubes that are 10,000K, you might not have as many of the reds and blues in there. So adding a secondary light source that provides some extra reds and oranges will make those earth tones pop. You know, my orange fish in there, my barbs and my glow light tetras, my raspberry hats, they'd all pop if I added an additional light source that had more oranges in it. So, again, none of this is really going to change anything. It's just sort of the way maybe you can think about the tank differently and think about the kind of light source you put on it. There's a lot of ways you can subtly change the look and feel of your tank. You can simply move the light source around. You can have different um, source points will change the shadows, it changes the texture of your tank, it changes the feel of the tank, and then, of course, like I said, changing the color, temperature of whatever lights you have on there will make a big difference as well. Um, one thing you can do is if you have some timers set up, or even if you just want to manually do it, have two light fixtures on it, or, you know, I have two that run on this tank normally. I'm down to one at the moment. I'm waiting on some tubes to come in. I did have a fixture burn out on me. Um, but if you've got, a, uh, you know, two, two tubes on there or something, have a 2700K tube and then have a 10,000K, and in the evening, you know, an hour before you go to bed or whatever, go ahead and turn the 10,000K off and leave the, the 2700K on for the last hour of the day, and you'll get a nice little sunset-y you know, effect in your tank. It'll give it those softer colors. Uh, your fish might even appreciate it. Who knows? Maybe they like going, you know, instead of pow, the light's just snapping out on them. Maybe they like to go through a little bit of a evening time as well and watch the colors soften as the day drains away. But the color you put on your tank and the light you put on your tank 100% impacts what it looks like. Again, nothing has any color in and of itself. All color comes from the light you're shining on it. So the quality of light you put on there, the kind of light you put on there, the color temperature of the light you put on there, all these things really do make a difference. Again, I know nobody's going to like go rush out and, and change their lighting all around or whatever. I certainly hope you don't. But it is something to think about. And the next time you're out shopping for tubes and it's time to purchase new ones, because remember, uh, tubes will wear out over time. And in about a year or so, uh, if you do have a planted tank, you need to replace your tubes. They will not be providing the same color temperatures and the same color spectrums that they did when they were new. And the same goes for if you just simply want to look at your tank. Um, just replace your tubes every year to 18 months and you should be good to go. And the next time you do, think about it a little bit. Think about what color temperature you want to do. Think about the quality. You know, Do you want to buy a little higher quality uh, light fixture this time or a better tube? Again, just food for thought, something to think about. I do have an article that I've read before that's really, really interesting. It's more about photography and how to get the most out of your subject by your different light sources and all the kind of stuff I'm talking about. But it's a lot of really good information in there, and it explains a lot of what I sort of just plowed over uh, in a lot more detail. And the fact that it's written down, you can go over it as many times as you want and study it. It's like four or five pages long. It gets really bogged down after a while. I don't think I've ever gotten past the second page. Um, but it's a lot of good information about lights, light sources, color temperature, color rendering, uh, and that sort of thing. So I'll attach a link to that article uh, in the comment section below if you're interested in learning any more about this. But hopefully that was enough information to at least get you started in the right direction. Feel free to ask any questions, point me in any right directions if you want me to talk about any other aspect of this. Uh, I've, I've attempted this video so many times today, I honestly can't remember what I have said and haven't said in which video anymore. So I hope I covered enough 
enough that that all made some kind of sense. And we're going to go with this one, and hopefully you all enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe, that way you won't miss whatever else i got coming up. You never really know what you're going to get with me, and I like to think it's always some good stuff. So thanks for watching this one, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope I'll see you real soon on the next one.